Welcome back everybody, TJ Grant here with Quad Poly, and today we're going to continue our series on going from After Effects to Fusion. In part two here, we're going to be covering animation. And in particular, we're going to cover three different types of interpolation methods on keyframes. So with that being said, let's get started. So inside of After Effects here, all I've done is set up a simple animation that showcases three common interpolation methods. The top one, let me turn off the other layers here, the top one is a very simple linear motion from point A to point B. The second example is the same motion but I did the quintessential smashing of that F9 button in order to create that ease on the keyframe itself inside of After Effects. And then of course the last one here all I've done is taken the keyframes and went to the graph editor and just made the curves a little bit more uh, exaggerated when it came to the easy ease uh, going from point to point. Okay, you'll also notice that inside of the After Effects scene here, I have one graphic as well as one comp and three different instances of that graphic. So let's go ahead and make that same scene inside of Fusion. So inside Fusion, let's go ahead and add in our mine image. So up in the toolbar, let's click on Loader, and let's find our mine image and just click on Open. Let's take a look at it in the viewport. And you'll notice that there's some aliasing along the edges here. So if I click on the Import tab and just click on Post Multiply by Alpha, that's going to help smooth out those edges. Next, I need to make three copies of these but I need to have them all into the same comp. And I also need to be able to transform each of these mines individually. So the way that we're going to do that in Fusion is first we're to add in some transform nodes. So if I right click, go to Add Tool, go down to Transform, and click on Transform. Now I need two more copies of these, and inside of Fusion you could very easily just copy and paste it. And on the Windows, obviously Control-C, Control-V, and on Mac it's Command-C, Command-V. But I'm going to make two more copies of these. And you'll also notice that they're already connected together. I don't want that. So what you can do inside of Fusion is if you hold down the Shift key and just click on the node, it will disconnect those wires. Okay? And then let's go ahead and take this image and let's drag it into each one of these transform nodes. So now that I have these transform nodes, I need to add in some merge nodes. So up in the toolbar here, under MRG, just go ahead and click on Merge. And just like with the transform nodes, I need to make three copies of this. So paste, paste, and paste. All right. And let's just move these into place. Okay. Now I have three merges so that I can have three individual copies. But then on this last merge, what I need is a background node because I need to make that solid gradient just like in the After Effects. So let's go ahead and add that into our scene as well. All right, and then under the merge node, you'll notice that it does have these two inputs here. The yellow uh, arrow is always the background. The green arrow is always the foreground. So on our background node, go ahead and plug that into the yellow triangle on this bottom merge node and then let's take the output of this merge node here and plug it into the green arrow and then let's just take a look and see what we have okay and then what we can do is let's connect these to those merge nodes And there we go, we have three objects in here. Now they're all sitting on top of one another. So what I could do is click on this transform node and we could just move these into place. All right, we could use this using the little axis here, the Y and the X axis tool. Just move them up and down. So with our scene set up now, we're gonna use, go to the top transform node here and we're going to start animating on the X value. The way we're going to do that is right click on center and we can click on animate. And that's going to set a keyframe. And it's also going to turn everything green here so that Fusion 
knows that we're going to be animating this value. So what I'm going to do is move this over and I'm going to set this to 2.5 just to keep it an even number. And then down here in our timeline, you'll notice that there is now a green marker. I'm going to go over to frame 30 and we're going to just move this over. All right. And what's great is that you're also going to see the motion path behind there. And you know that it's connecting to that other keyframe. And then we'll go back to frame 60. And we'll just move it back. All right. We'll change that again to negative 2.5. Okay. So now if I go and I play the animation, we have a simple linear animation from point A to point B. So let's go ahead and do the same process down here to the second one, only this time we're going to use and make an ease in and ease out. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to do it in a little bit of a different fashion. Let's go back to frame zero here. And this time when I right click, I'm going to go to modify with and I'm going to choose an XY path. All right, now the reason for that is because we're going to be using the spline editor. So if I come over to our spline editor, in our transform one underscore one, there is an XY path. Let's go ahead and click top check box up there. And then since we're only going to be working in the Y axis, let's just go ahead and deselect the Y. Okay. Uh, because we only want to see the X here. All right. So now with our keyframes, let's go to negative 2.5 to get to our start point. All right, then let's go over to frame 30, just like before. And this time, let's go to five. Okay, and if you hold down control and mouse wheel, you'll be able to uh, zoom in and out. And also up here, you just put your mouse cursor over the timeline here and you click, left click and drag. You can also zoom in this way. So let's just go ahead and do that a little bit so that we can see our curves better. All right, and then let's go back to frame 60 and go to negative 2.5. Okay, so now I have a curve. Okay, now if I play this, it's going to be exactly the same. Okay, but if I want to add in that ease, it's a very simple process. I select all of the keyframes and then come up to our toolbar up here. These are all the different interpolation methods that we can apply to these keyframes. So if we want a stepped one, right, just like in After Effects, I could step between the keyframes there so it's not going to move until it gets to that particular keyframe. That's not exactly what we want. Um, what we want to do is add a smooth. And all we have to do is, again, highlight all the keyframes and click on the smooth one. All right, and now if we play it, you'll notice that we've had an ease in and an ease out. Okay, so let's go on to the last one and then we'll explain some more about the curve editor once we get this animated. So just like the previous transform it's we're going to do the exact same process for this one so we'll right click on the center and we'll go to modify with and we'll go to the xy path okay and i'm going to move this over i'll do negative 2.5 and then we'll come over to frame 30 and we will have 3.5 and then lastly, frame 60 and back to negative 2.5. Okay, now let's take a look at our spline editor, right? So let's turn off our transform one path since we don't need to see that right now. And under our transform one underscore two, which is this one, we don't need to see the Y path as well. Okay, so in the After Effects example, we added an, an extreme ease in and ease out. Like it really took a long time to go and then it 
quickly went back, then fourth, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. All right, we're going to select all the keyframes, and we're going to click on smooth. We're just going to go ahead and add this. All right, now the way that we're going to do the extreme move is you'll notice that it's in line with the second one, but I want it to hang back just a little bit longer. So in your spline editor here, we can actually adjust these curves, okay? So if you are not familiar with adjusting curves, anytime that you have a curve that looks like this, where the keyframe, the action is going in and then it slowly goes up, that that's going to create more keyframes, so it's going to start off slower, or it's going to ease in to the action. And then the same thing too, if we have a speed over here, where it's coming down and it really starts to get flat, like it's easing into that keyframe. Okay, so if I were to take a look at it right now, you'll see that it lags behind, and then it speeds up, and then it lags, speeds up and then it lags all right and it's a much different timing than the one right above it okay but also too I could change the entire way that that works I could let's say I want it to start off really fast and then ease into this transition and then back out again so if I were to play it right now it really takes off even to the point where you really can't even see it. Um, but that is one of the really great things about working with the graph editor, right? And I know you could do the same thing inside of After Effects, but the way that it works in Fusion is that it's, it's extremely intuitive, right? You can really tell that this program was built around working with the graph editor. And the graph editor is probably one of the uh, most powerful uh, toolkits that you can use as an animator to really um, affect the movement of the objects without having to add in tons of keyframes. So now that we've seen these three different interpolation methods, we have the linear, ease in and ease out, and the extreme ease in and ease out after we manipulated the graph editor, Let's go ahead and show you one more item, and that is, I want to make these loop. Okay, like I could take this entire animation here, just set it to 60 as the preview range, if I really wanted to, and I can just hit play, and it would naturally begin to loop that way. But what if I don't, what if I want more than 60 frames, but I want it to keep looping? Okay, let's uh, change this to, let's just give it 300 frames. The way that we can do this is extremely simple inside of Fusion. So if I select all of these keyframes, and I just come over here and I click on the set loop, it's just going to loop it all the way down the timeline. So now when I play it, it's just going to keep looping on and on and on until it gets to the end of the timeline. Right? It's that simple to set up a very quick loop, and we can do that for all of them. Um, right, so we can set that up and it would just keep looping on indefinitely. So before I wrap this up, uh, I want to touch base on something real quick here, and that is dealing with the node editor. Um, on projects such as this, one thing that I found extremely handy, um, and you're not going to be able to do this for every single project, uh, but there is a chance that you can use it for very simple projects like that, and that is when you're making and developing your note editor, sometimes it's helpful to have it be reflective of the object placement in your scene. So in this case, transform one node is on the top mine, the middle one, the bottom one, okay? And it's just keeping in mind certain things like that that really go to help um, kind of with the organization of the entire scene.
Now you're not going to be able to get away with that with every scene, um, but for sometimes simple projects like this where placement of the screen is important or um, certain items need to be located in certain places, uh, structuring your note editor may be helpful in that way. All right. And then the last thing I do want to cover as well is um, in the After Effects file, we did have a gradient here. So in our background node inside of Fusion, and we'll be going over this in a future lesson as well, but we can very quickly create um, different colors as well as uh, gradients. And over here you have the uh, horizontal uh, gradient. And if I just pick a color, it'll just go ahead and create a gradient ramp for you. And our example though, we just had a blue. Add a little bit of green to it. Well, that wraps up our tutorial for today. I hope you've learned some more about going from After Effects to Fusion. If you have any questions or if there's any topics that you would like for me to cover, please send me a message and I look forward to hearing from you all. If you'd like to see more of these videos though, please like and subscribe to this channel so that you can stay updated on when I release new content. And with that being said, stay inspired, keep pushing those pixels guys, and I will see you in the next tutorial.